Hi there, um, my name is Ruth Francis. I'm Enterprise Coordinator at East Sussex Careers Hub based at the County Council and today I'm joined by Marcus. Hi Marcus. Hi Ruth. Thanks so much. I'm good, thanks. How are you? Very well, thank you. Excellent. Um, So Marcus, you work in the NHS, um, so I wondered if you could just start by um, telling us like your job title and roughly what that involves. Oh, okay. So my job title is I'm a student nurse, um, is on a three year course, and I'm currently just about to start year three. So um, the the course involves uh, academia, so reading lots of books, writing lots of essays, but also a big portion of it is being in a hospital and learning your skills as as to be a nurse, and that's a student paediatric nurse, which means I specialize in children only. Um, And that means age group from from, uh, zero right through till 18. So, yeah. Brilliant, so um, during the week, are you spending some of your time, well, in normal, in normal circumstances, when we're not locked down in a pandemic, would you physically be at university and then being physically in the hospital buildings some other times during the week? That's right, yeah. So the course is really well split. So you tend to find your half the time you're in your classroom with your books and you know going through having lessons and um, they're really interesting and then you then get to spend the other half of the time um, in a hospital in hospitals and they're they, and they differ so you get to a real range of different hospitals um that offer different forms of help and support um all across sussex um and you really get that lovely uh well you just get to do things you never thought you would do and you get to work in places you thought you wouldn't particularly enjoy but then you end up really enjoying it Okay, then, interesting. So, so after the three years, you've come out of your course and you've been given all the flavours. It's a bit like going into a kitchen and the chef is giving you lots of things to try out to see what what you really want to do at the end of the course and where you want to where you want to go and work. Sure. Okay. Lovely. And is that is that Brighton Uni or Sussex? It's Brighton Uni. Okay. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Oh, fantastic. Um, so t- give us a little bit of an idea about what brings you into nursing. So you're obviously not come straight from school. So what kind of motivated you to kind of take a bit of a wiggly path? Maybe it wasn't a wiggly path, maybe it was a straight path. I don't know. T- tell us about that. Oh, OK. So, yes, as you can see, I am a mature student. <laughs> but um, um, as I was told by a famous nurse once who I contacted, somebody I was... I, 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 admired their work for many years and I managed to get hold of her and she said Marcus I teach people in their 70s you know she goes you've got many years left yet so um, and I was very very keen to get into nursing so I was in the ambulance service before this um, which was brilliant which was a real adventure going around on blue lights and seeing everything really and saying i think also, i think the biggest thing is you just get to see you get to see people you get to see people of all ages again births right through to deaths really and everything in between so for me that was i wanted to learn emergency procedures i was quite fascinated um but i was always really keen on nursing from i think from a child really and i think it always stayed with me for many years until I, when I was in the ambulance service, I found the the nursing side of paramedics was was something I really wanted to do more of. Mm-hmm. I wanted to care for people. I wanted to stay with them, mm-hmm. look after them, reassure them, um, meet their families, yeah. and uh, that was really key. So I made the change, and I chose children because. I brought up my own children um, years ago and uh, loved being uh, a father in that respect of having been so hands-on. Um, and I always thought children's 
hospitals are really fun places as well. Um, with a, you know, they just seem, <laughs> they just seem much happier, joyful places. Uh, I think adult uh, hospitals could could learn a lot from children's hospitals oh, by just bringing in more games and I don't know. I'm a big supporter of uh, of of uh, you know the aesthetics of the place looking really sort of inspiring and joyful. Yeah. Yeah, that does make that does make sense. I think there is yeah. a sometimes you feel like I've only been in hospital a couple of times in my life, and you do sort of feel a little bit, I don't know, like you're in some scientific experiment, not like you're in a nice bedroom with yeah. um, relaxing things around you, which is a bit of a shame sometimes. <laughs> yes, yeah. and one one of the places I work in is a hospice, and they the whole house has been designed so that it doesn't remind children that they're in hospital. Mm-hmm. You know, you go in and it actually feels homely. That's so you know, nice. You know, the washing's hanging outside on the line. <laughs> you know, you can go for country, you can go for nature nature walks through the woods. You can the bedrooms of, you know, are adapted to the the age group of the child and what mm-hmm. they want to be doing. You know, I'm... so that was really interesting to see from from the experience I've had, and I think it's great. Yeah. 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 So you're obviously having, as, as a student nurse, you're having that very varied time where you're being moved through different hospitals in different departments. Um, so this might be a bit of a hard thing to answer, but I'm just wondering if you can um, give people a bit of an idea of maybe what a typical, there's probably not one, but uh, some idea of like during a day, what you might be doing as a nurse. Okay, so first of all, there are, being a nurse covers so many different things. There are, I can't think of another job where you can go into so many different areas of nursing. It's just incredible. And you could spend your whole career going from different department to different ward to different hospital all around the world. So you will always see something so much different, something different. But, but I can talk from a position of say, let's say for example, the Children's Hospital in Brighton, Mm. where I spent some time working there. So it's a long day. So it's like a 12 and a half hour day normally. So you prepare yourself for having a long day. And essentially, so for example, I was working on day surgery um, for a while. And that that, that entails um, bringing children in and they would be spending the whole day in that ward they would come in for a, what is normally a small operation and um, recover and then go home. Mm-hmm. So, so during that time, it was important just to welcome the parents in, welcome the child in, be with them, talk with them, and uh, just make the, make sure they know that they are they, they can they're, they're in good hands. They know what's happening. Um, and yeah, because some children or and, and some parents can be quite frightened or quite scared to be in hospital. Um, and that was really important to then just spend that time with them. So play was really important. Card tricks or anything, just talking, just mm-hmm. being normal, just saying, mm-hmm. look, you know, just just being with them. And, and I found that, you know, Everyone was like that. Everyone was willing just to come and be part of it. A surgeon or anaesthetist or a doctor or other nurses. You know, everyone was everyone was there just to help that patient have a really positive experience. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's that's so important. I think as within, that makes everything else go a little bit better. Yeah, because mm-hmm. it, it's hard when someone's really upset really really frightened it it's fine you can reassure them you can work on that you have play like specialist play therapists there they just they are hired to play and be with the child and look after them reassure them and they're very very good at their job mm-hmm. and sometimes you can't do anything unless you have a you just need that play therapist so they, they've got a way you know so you all help each other out but so within that department, for example, you would be 
it was a fascinating department because you brought the child in in the morning, you um, took them through to the anaesthetic room where they were put to sleep, then you follow them into the operating theatre, watch the operation, follow them out into recovery, they would wake up, then you bring them back into the ward where their, their family or whoever's waiting for them. This whole incredible journey where you're being the nurse. And one thing that was really important about that, it was just being being there for the child so they see a very familiar face. Yeah. Not constantly different faces, but even if you were just the one nurse that's staying with them all the time, has a really positive effect. And yeah. and I think parents like that too. Definitely. You know, you're there. You're not mm -hmm. doing anything else. You are just... You're there encouraging. You could just be standing next to a bed. It makes a, a, a really big difference, I think. Yeah. You know, in what could be, and obviously seeing a hospital through a child's eyes, it can be, it can be quite daunting, as you say. It can be quite clinical. <laughs> or you could feel like you're on some sort of spaceship or mm. these strange machines. Mm -hmm. So the, I found that my job was to make it normal, have a laugh, you know, find funny books or just, you know, just yeah. bring it down. Just make it normal. It's okay. We're just, we're all human beings here. Yeah. We're here because we, we care about you mm -hmm. and how you are, how you feel about your experience is really important. Yeah. So being part of that was really fun. Yeah. Really fun. Oh, that's, oh, thank you, Marcus. You've given us a really lovely, <laughs> lovely picture there. Um. So I'm just wondering, is there anything you use day in, day out in your role? Any, any tools? I do. I, I've got two things here which are really important. Yeah. Um, one is a <laughs> nurse's watch. Okay. Um, probably, um, this is really important. It's really basic, but it's really important. You can't wear anything on your wrists at all. You have to have completely... Elbow down completely, no, no jewellery or anything. Oh, okay. You can wear one of these on your uniform. And this is really important because you have to, so many things are counted over a, a minute, say for example, or if you're looking at a patient or counting them breathing, um, counting their heart rate, you know, checking the pulse, everything. A lot of it's counted over a minute. So having a little watch is really good. Um, and some of those observations that you do on every patient um, are so important. They, they can appear to be very simple and minimal, but actually their importance is very great. Mm -hmm. you know? So having a good, a good watch. Um, and do you get that issue to you when you um, become a nurse? Or do you have to go and buy that yourself? No, you don't. You don't. Um, I think some hospitals might give you a... Can, they might give you one, but um, I think a lot of people like to go and find their own one. Okay. So, <laughs> ones with, you know, you can get colourful ones and ones with animal ones or... Um, and this is a stethoscope. This is really important. Again, a really important piece of equipment that you will see doctors, nurses use. Really, really important. And this one... <laughs> <laughs> this one has a little man attached to it. Oh, is that what that is? He's basically, can you see him? He's sort of clinging yeah. on. <laughs> <laughs> He's clinging on there. So here's just a bit of fun, really, to make it, you know. Yeah. So this is this is a really brilliant, brilliant um, instrument um, to be able to hear someone's chest mm. predominantly. Mm -hmm. And listen to the chest, particularly if you're bad, cold, or feeling that great. Um, you can also listen to their their tummy, listen to their tummy sounds, see what's going on there. If there's some kind of blockage or things aren't working out too well down there, um, but so really, if really had a blockage in their bowel, in their intestine. Like what kind, what kind of noises would you be hearing? Yeah, I'm yeah. just curious now. Well, it's important for your, your, your bowels do make noises all the time. Mm. So what you find sometimes is, is rather than just touching, you touch, say, 
if you've got pain in your tummy and if you push in certain areas and, it, and it's painful, it, could, it might be painful for that person. Mm -hmm. Then you'd be thinking, oh, that's interesting. It's, it's a painful tummy. And you might also listen as well. So, for example, if you didn't hear anything at all, yes. that wouldn't be normal. But if you heard a great deal of noise, then also that might be something that's showing up as not being normal. Okay. Um, so, you, more, the more you do it, it's like listening to someone's chest. Mm. What sounds normal mm -hmm. when, you, when someone breathes in and out, you get very, very used to kind of going, ah, this is this is what what what, what sounds normal yeah. for that for this kind of person at this age, and then you can then you can get through practice, you can pick up things you might hear that need treating. Mm -hmm. So yeah, mm. yeah, it's uh, if you haven't got a steth. And you need a very good steth as well. If you're going to buy a stethoscope, um, you tend to get trained on plastic ones, which are not very good. Um, <laughs> but I would, I bought this when I was in the ambulance service, and it's lasted me, and it's seen many patients. So I would always say buy a really, really good one, because you get a really good sound, clear sound uh, in your ears. Almost like earphones. <laughs> it is. Yeah. I'm putting it in crude terms, but. It's strange at first, but it's it, it becomes your friend after a while. It's mm. you use it so much, and also with these things, with like a, using a stethoscope, it also I find it also brings you closer to the patient. It also builds your trust. With it. So when someone's panicking or they're not feeling very well and they might be worried about the state of their health, mm -hmm. often if you can just sit them down and just spend some time on them. And obviously with this, you need silence. So when you listen to someone's chest, you're asking for silence. Mm -hmm. That in itself incurs the patient to actually relax more. They tend to just relax their shoulders. They tend to trust you because it's like someone spending time on you. They're, they're finding out about you. It, it, I find that as a way of building trust with the patient. So okay. always just little things, whether it's finding someone's pulse. All these things are just very gentle and carefully done. But they, I find they really are a way of building that trust with patients where they feel, oh, I can, I can relax here, I'm safe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, very interesting. Yeah. Thank you. Um, so you've spoken about, um, yeah, the different scenarios you found yourself in and I can sort of see um, you've obviously had a um, deep amount of knowledge that you've brought from your previous roles I imagine so um, for someone who's perhaps not coming with say the ambulance service um, behind them I mean what kinds of skills and attributes do you think you need to really succeed in nursing? You've got to like people <laughs> and <laughs> And also, I think if you if you can if you know how to look after yourself. Mm. So, part of our course now is, which I think is a first. I think this is a quite a new part of the course. Mm. Is about how you look after yourself. How are you going to look after yourself out there? You know. <clears throat> now I'm a mature student. I've been around a bit. I've been gone through a bit of life. I've seen a bit of life. I feel incredibly uh, lucky to have gone through what I've gone through, and um, I, I feel I feel I can bring my life experience into my work. But I think if you're coming into it at a much younger age, um, I would say, yeah, do, perhaps don't rush into it at all. Mm -hmm. I've spoken to many nurses who said to me, I had a conversation yesterday with somebody who's been in like 40 years. So oh, I went straight in from school. You know, I didn't know what I was doing, had no experience at all. And it was quite challenging. I've had that a lot, from a lot of people. Mm -hmm. So what I would say is, do things that are going to challenge you and do things that are going to help you get to know yourself. Okay. So, 
I've traveled in my life, for periods in my life I've gone traveling. A great way to educate yourself, to get to know yourself. Um, and through my, and, and through obviously being a parent and um, the, the jobs and the work that I've done, mm-hmm. um, and relationships, they've all helped me get to know myself. So if I'm having a hard day or whatever, I know what's going to pick me up and make me feel better. But I think that, that does come with age, I think. And mm-hmm. experience. So, mm-hmm. um, but going back to what your, your original question was, what attributes? I think yeah, liking people, but also um, ask yourself why you want to do nursing. What is it about nursing? And if you can get any kind of experience, whether it's phoning up a hospital and saying, is it possible I can just come in for a few days and just I'm thinking about doing a course or I'm thinking about this or that, or perhaps look into volunteers, maybe for various people, um, some sort of medical groups. Yeah. To be handy. Yeah. Just to be around, be around people that aren't well, you know, and see how you react to people being unwell. Because for some people it's very stressful seeing someone that's unwell. You can feel very powerless. So before I went into the ambulance service, I had a friend who was uh, in the ambulance service and he took me out on a car for a whole week. I did three or four shifts with him. And then he asked me, so what do you think? And I said, well, I'm I'm fascinated. I'm absolutely fascinated. And I had a million questions. What do you do if you go to somebody like this? What do you do if that person does that? What happens and what treatment does that person have? And why do they have that? I had, a, and I still have that. I still have that now. And I wanted to feed that. Yeah. Well, I think you have to be very, very sure to go into this. I think it's a very hard job if you don't love it. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I think this is only my own, <laughs> I suppose, perception of, of this, but a great deal of people left the ambulance service because it wasn't what they thought it would be. And they tended to be very young Mm -hmm. and they hadn't had any life experience. So I would always, I I really think that's a really big thing that education should be encouraging children to, I would say personally, get some experience. Okay, yeah. With people, read books, read some interesting books, um, whether it's, you know, books like this, um, Guts, okay. which is great, That's all about, about all... your tummy, <laughs> I'm guessing. <laughs> and it's brilliant because this, the doctor who wrote this was very poorly as a child, wasn't she? And, um, through her own illness, she then, what transpired was her passion for, um, for treating people and being a doctor. Mm-hmm. So really, so books like this and another book here. This is amazing, written by a, uh, a doctor in London um, and, talks, and talks about the limits of the human body. I find books fast, absolutely fascinating and um, far more than looking anything up on the internet. So, so it's, yeah. I, would, I think all that, that combination, if you are someone that wants to, really wants to throw yourself into something amazing, then it's a great great job <laughs> i've got a cheeky question now oh, okay <laughs> that i didn't tell you i was gonna ask i don't think so um so i think it's still the case that only about a tenth of nurses are male yeah. so i just wondered you know have you got any advice for anyone who is male is intrigued by the idea of nursing but is maybe thinking oh i don't know i'm like is it really for me i mean what would what would you say to them well, firstly, um, yeah, that's right. It's, it's still 10%. I don't think that's changed in 60 years. I think, you know, something like that anyway. It's, it's been that way for a long, long time. Um, I don't know why. Mm. Um, because nursing's changed so much. It's now being, it's now being the, the whole idea of being a nurse now, the whole, it, it, the, the uniform, the whole image of the nurse, you know, with the, hair tight the lady with the hair tied up with the, the bonnet on with the red cross you know it's all gone it's completely changed um 
it's it's now being cons- well it's now being compared to the training of a junior doctor mm-hmm. you know because the the amount that you do now is so much you know you're learning about pharmacology and um so gosh, pharmacology the, the, is the study of drugs am i right <laughs> that's right yeah yep. how uh, drugs and medication work on the body and how your body responds to those things so we're learning about things which and doing skills that used to be only the doctor would do so years ago that the, the nurse was considered the assistant to the doctor it's not there anymore the doctors learn medicine and we learn nursing and it's kept very very you know you work together yeah and that is and, and brilliant brilliant for that so if you're a man and you want to get into nursing, great, it's fantastic. Personally, I've found it to be a an advantage. Um, and, an, and another advantage has been my age, actually. Okay. Because when I go into a ward, which is predominantly men, everyone knows who I am. And it really helps. I've got to remember their names, yeah. which, is, which is difficult. But everyone knows who you are. And I personally think that I I'm, have to say that's been very, very useful. Um, and it's great, yeah. I feel like I, I, I would encourage, I would really encourage it. It's, it's fantastic. And it's, um, there's nothing in it which I would say has been uncomfortable mm-hmm. or shown up, has made me feel uncomfortable because I'm a man, you know. Yeah. It's a job for both men and women, yeah. for, for anyone who's passionate about it. Yeah. Um, can I give you an example of how useful it has been? Yeah, please do, please do. So in, in the children's hospice, for example, it's it's sort of 95% women that work there as nurses. Mm-hmm. So, and of course they have boys and girls that come in to stay. And some of those boys, so quite often I've gone in and they've gone, thank God you're here, you know, because our patient just wants to be around another man. <laughs> you know, he's just seeing us all the time. So I've, I've had that experience quite a lot. Yeah. And they, they really, and, and most hospitals I've been to, really want more men to work in the hospital or in that ward. Yeah. Um, but there's no, I don't, I haven't seen any kind of push for that yet, or a, a target, or a, um, in, in, any kind of inspiring um, social media of, campaign or anything. Yeah, I haven't seen anything mm. that's, that's asking, you know, you know this this possibly going to encourage me to go into it. But maybe that will come soon. But no, yeah. it's a job for both, absolutely, and both are very much needed. Yeah. Brilliant. Oh, thank you so much, Marcus. That's fantastic. I'm just going to give people a few little um, different websites to take a look at, um, just to sort of see if they want to take it further. Um, so if you go to um, healthcareers.nhs.org and look under Explore Roles, um, you'll find Nurse under there. Um, you can also look at Step into the NHS, um, which is another really handy one, um, and you can find their um, children's nurse um, specifically as well. And there's a good quiz on that website that lets you see what kind of area of the NHS you might be perfect for. Marcus, thank you so much. I think that was really amazing. I, your passion just kind of completely shone through, and I think you're going to inspire a lot of people um, with your comments. I really do. Thank oh, you for your time. Thank you very much. Pleasure. Thank you. Pleasure. Take care. Bye. Thank you.